Okay, so this is a, a great case. This is actually another executive that's in the, uh, it's not his real name, but another executive that's in the nutrition business industry that wanted to see this, uh, the program work. And it was funny because when I went through his report, he was like, man, you told me so much more than I'd get at the typical doctor office. He already signed his wife up immediately as soon as he saw the metabolic code report. So just just that I'm, and I'm and I'm telling you guys that because I'm telling you when you when you give somebody this report it creates a wow effect and it it drives other business right away and and that was interesting for me because it was like wow okay cool you know hey you're going to have you know your wife and you know your in-laws and you know before I know it I'm going to have eight people out of this because I had an organized way of explaining where his metabolism was at instead of just going all over the place with you know as you go down a lab uh, sheet so it really made a difference from the from the business perspective of getting his his assessment done quickly, having an impact, and then you know really getting business immediately um, from him. So anyway, let's look at his questionnaire. And uh, you know you can see here he's born in 1975. He's uh, he didn't give us a blood pressure or heart. You wouldn't have any of the other vitals on him, but he was. Uh, you know, you know, you know, 68 inches tall, 168 pounds. He's up a little bit of weight. He does, you know, kind of this, uh, you know, big executive. And when he gets under big stress, he doesn't sleep as well. And we'll kind of go through this and see what it what it shows us. So uh, as you go through this whole first part of the questionnaire, it's all going nose. So when you look at him, you go, okay, let's go down here to adrenal. Do you, do you take more than three cups a day of coffee or another caffeinated beverage in order to get energy? And he was a yes. And then he also was complaining that his short-term memory was starting to go. So right away, you know, business executive, midday fatigue, not thinking as sharp as he could. He's a great candidate for RG3, actually, um, which I just got another executive, you know, talking about RG3 and how it changed her life uh, to be able to think through the mid-afternoon again. Um, but but then let's go on to, you know, you know, again, no other adrenal symptoms. Uh, has very difficult, a lot of difficulty with losing weight. Uh, he's always got that extra, extra 15 pounds he can't seem to get off. Let's keep going. Has he complained about anything else? He feels full for an extended period of time after eating. Well, either he needs a digestive enzyme or maybe some betaine or maybe he's not chewing his food, right? Uh, no other complaints digestively. He does have a chronic post-nasal drip. He does end up sneezing a fair amount. He definitely has trouble with sleep. Look how his brain, you know, you look at, he only sleeps between five and seven hours. He's a restless sleeper. He wakes up up to three times a night. I remember when I interviewed him that he wakes up up to three times a night. And then he has difficulty falling and staying asleep. So clearly, this business executive is pushing that that first triad really hard, and although he's not in bad health, it you know it look he's 1975. He's you know in fact 15 years younger than me. So you know this is a guy that's just 40 years old. But when you fill out his questionnaire and you talk to him, you'd think he's 15 years older than I am. And you'd think he was 70, you know, because oh yeah, I'm not thinking as sharp. I'm not sleeping well. I'm kind of stressed out. I don't you know I'm I'm overweight. You know, and I, I don't seem to get as much exercise as I should. And then as you go through here, he's saying no a lot until we get the sex hormones and off and running. There we go. Reduced urine flow, uh, forced urination, frequency issues uh, are there. So really, this guy, if you're going strictly on the questionnaire, stress is playing out the, the, uh, the majority of this. But let's look at his labs. Let's see what happens when we do the report. It'll be popping up in just a second. Here we go. So let's take a look at uh, what's going on. Um, so as we look here, let's take a look. Now, he's not scoring high anywhere. Uh, you know, so his labs aren't particularly driving this thing crazy. His gut isn't particularly driving it crazy. If you notice, his highest score is 400. But for him... Clearly, his interest was to be able to sleep better, think clearer, and get some weight off. 
So when you think about that, you know, got to, you know, the adrenal causes a lot of problems with brain and memory, right? As all you guys know, but it's the reason that the the gut immune brain triad kind of rises up on this because look how many points he scored on the symptom score for brain, right? Um, and 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 so that that's what I think is interesting is that you clearly can tell that these first two triads are dominating this individual, this 40 year old international business executive running a you know multi multi million dollar uh, raw material uh, company, uh, and yet feeling like uh, uh oh I guess I don't have the raw right raw material for me to take right, <laughs> so so as we go on let's take a look. You can see now that he has a lot of just yellow moderate risk, no red risk, a lot of moderate uh, risk. I'm going to shrink this over here. Um, and, uh, and then actually he's in the green in terms of some of his, you know, this is probably one of the better overall uh, reports that I've seen in terms of he's got risk in green, risk in yellow, hardly any risk in red. So he actually is somebody that's trying to take care of himself. But clearly, uh, stress is getting the better of them. So let's take a look at what's going on. For, so the first thing you see is what? He has a cortisol of almost 21. So he is trending high serum morning cortisol. So you know the, the morning is trending high. His DHEA is dipping. His sodium is starting to dip low. Clearly, his adrenals are in that, that early stage of he's sympathetic dominant. You know, I wanted him to make sure he does his blood pressures and report them to us uh, because this is an executive. It's a nice thing about doing this metabolic code report. He's an executive in New York, and I can do a nutrition evaluation on him. He's gonna, he's gonna, you know, he's gonna do his pH. He's gonna do his blood pressure. He'll report it back to us because I suspect that that, that he would be a candidate for his blood pressure to be starting to climb a little due to the fact that his cortisol is high and his sodium is starting to trend low. So he's, he, you know, he's in that sustained fight or flight response. Uh, if we look at his thyroid hormones, I mean, let's let's face it, guys. I mean, we could pick on these, like you know, uh, yeah, his free T3 is good. His total T3 could be better. It's kind of trending low. Uh, his his free T4 is good, and his total T4 is eh, okay. But what we see right now is that he's really still holding in there with his thyroid hormones. This wouldn't be something that you'd have to go to uh, right away, right? It's pretty good. Now, let's go to the next one, his blood sugar. So if you look at this, his fasting sugar is actually hypoglycemic almost, and he reported that. He can't go too long without eating or he starts getting irritable, grouchy, and starting to get dizzy and shaky. And uh, his hemoglobin A1C is high, so what's that telling you? He's making too much insulin postprandial, so he's glycating, and his blood sugars dip too fast. Uh, and so this is a, a great example of someone who is probably, if the stress levels go high, that fasting blood sugar is going to start to climb, and he's going to be a great candidate to become a fully insulin resistant uh, uh, person, or and which will lead him obviously to things like diabetes and other inflammatory disorders. Um, as well as hypertension. He's not really a med S guy because of his BMI and his, and his weight and his height, but he is on, on his way to kind of the pre-hypertensive, um, pre-diabetic risk, and you can see it clearly based on the labs. His trigs are low, but he didn't need a lot of sugar, uh, so he's kind of good there. If you look here, his percent monocytes are kind of, you know, they're just on the borderline of trending high. His C-reactive protein is high, uh, you know, two nine. It really should be under one, right? But at least it's you know trending high. And then if you look, his vitamin D is trending low as well. You know, obviously we want him between 50 and 80. Some people, you know, everybody's got their idea of what's ideal on this thing, but we know for sure that 28 is too low. Um, and so we're getting a picture here that some of his immune parameters um, are kind of weak. He's got a little bit of chronic inflammation with the CRP. Got a little bit with the low vitamin D. His monocytes are, yeah, honestly, they're they're good enough. We're not going to, you know, bang on them too much. Um, and then his uh, globulins trending a little low. His basophils are trending 
a little bit high, but really these are not big parameters. Uh, look at his homocysteine though. Folate's through the roof, and his homocysteine is trending high. He takes he doesn't take he takes regular folic acid. He doesn't take methylfolate, uh, and he, nor does he take any other methylating B factors or, for example, even aged garlic, which targets homocysteine beautifully. So kaolic aged garlic is beautiful at lowering homocysteine. Uh, and so both of those are at peak. And, of course, elevated homocysteine is going to be throwing points into the cardio and the kidneys at the same time it is uh, listed in the brain, so just so you guys know. And then let's take a look at where he's at with his lipids. You know, his LDL slightly elevated, his total cholesterol slightly elevated, but you know what? We're not going to bang on that too hard, right? Because these numbers aren't that far off. But the next blood test he does, he wants to do a lipid particle number. And that'll probably show, uh, you know, some pretty big um, issues unless what we do with them intervenes and takes care of it. But we're going to measure that as next time out. Um, we didn't have his blood pressures here, so that was unfortunate. Uh, and then if you take a look here, you know, his iron is trending high. Uh, his, uh, M you know, his MCBs are trending high. His red cell width is actually okay. So he's got a little bit of that B vitamin issues going on here. His, his, uh, you know, his iron's a little bit saturated. You know, his hemoglobin isn't all that bad, though. So, I mean, there's really not a lot here that's um, alarming us, right? It's just they're out of balance a little bit. And if you get his metabolism right, look. Just correcting cortisol will alter blood counts, and will alt the, and, and altering pH will alter blood counts. So I mean, you know, because you start retaining minerals and and uh, you know enzyme functions start to occur correctly. So yeah, th this is although he has a lot of yellows in here, uh, it nothing too alarming. Although when you look at the platelets there at 157, that's probably the big one. And I'd say you keep your eye on that. Probably going to shift a little low. Uh, if it's any lower, it's, you know, there could be some toxicity there. But for his original reading, a lot of this with B vitamins, and uh, it, it would be corrective. And then let's take a look here at his kidneys. You know, kidney point's pretty good, other than his uric acid's trending high. Uric acid's trending high. He's probably got an acidic uh, pH, probably low in magnesium because of his hemoglobin A1C. And his dysglycemia, uh, so it kind of, you know, you kind of can tell that all these factors are kind of resonating together, kind of starting to see this shift in him. So he he might last a year, it might take five years, but he can end up with, uh, you know, clearly, a, you know, cardiometabolic risk or a MEDS kind of event where all of a sudden he's gaining 25 pounds and he can't figure out why. Now let's look at his sex hormones. And, you know, uh, you know, his testosterone for a guy that's, you know, 40 years old, I mean, it's not bad, but, you know, his free testosterone is kind of, you know, low. His, you know, his total should be a little better, really. I mean, you would think that this total would be up around 575 in his age group. Uh, but because his cortisol is high, we know that the cortisol-testosterone ratio shifts. So our target should be is use something that's going to improve his testosterone and lower his cortisol, and maybe even because he's under stress, give him something else for his cortisol. And and so, you know, that's the, you know, when you look at this, you can start to see it. He doesn't particularly have any problems with his estrogens, but you can tell that he's starting to lose testosterone production uh, because of his, um, you know, because of his cortisol spike. So, you know, that's kind of him. So what, what symptoms were big for the brain symptoms, right? Look, all that sleep stuff is where he scored highest. You know, he had a runny nose, so his gut's probably a little off. Um, you know, he didn't have a lot of other complaints related to, you know, being a, you know, a real bad GI key. So he's a, he was full for an extended period of time, not necessarily gassy and bloated. Uh, so maybe, you know, maybe the thought is that he gets digestive enzymes to start out when you put him on a modified low-carb diet. You know, his, the diet for him, the metabolic code diet is ideal for him 
because it's a modified low carb diet. It'll help to keep the insulin resistance down, keep the blood sugars regulated, um, and give them the energy he needs, right? So, you know, a little bit of like maybe some MCT oils or coconut oil or, or ghee is going to be really beneficial for him. Um, and so by far, if you look at the amount of symptoms he's experiencing, you know, the, the testosterone symptoms were really because, you know, his, you know, his prostate. Um, but the symptoms all are dominated in the first two triads. So, of course, you'd want to work there. And then, you know, once again, you can, we can review these. But as you can see, for triad one, hemoglobin A1C is up, sodium down, testosterone down, D down, homocysteine up. Uh, which is a byproduct, obviously, of, of uh, you know, blood sugar and, and, you know, cortisol and thyroid metabolism issues. We'll throw, you know, throw some um, stressor points into here. Uh, T3 total down, cortisol's high, CRP's high, uric acid's high, all that stuff. Uric acid, LDL, uh, CRP are all are associated with insulin resistance. So we're just pulling white blood cell counts altered. We're just pulling all that information here to say, you know what? All these labs are correlating to this triad. And then you go to gut immune brain, and you see the same thing, right? Uh, but not as many labs, more symptoms, right, um, on triad two. So, so that's why the scoring came out the way it did. And then obviously triad three. Uh, a little bit of elevation in cholesterol, a little bit of elevation in LDL. You know, T3 being down obviously sends points into the uh, cardio side of this triad, as well as the uh, homocysteine having an effect on the neurovascular aspect of this triad. And then with triad four, we see you know the um, homocysteine being off, the white blood cell count being off, platelets off. That the you know we're not getting replenishment of uh, red blood cells quite as good as we could. And of course his testosterone is down a little bit so that reports in triad in that triad. So going through obviously he has his you know he has his you know report and I gave one of these reports out today. We'll use we'll do this woman next week because she is that ideal person, 61 years old, has been very fit her whole life, hit menopause, hormones sent her through a loop. She didn't get any weight, but she, you know, it's the feeling of being unwell, and now her bladder's leaking, and she's wanting to optimize her health because she's always been able to kind of, kind of take care of herself, but then kind of be very social and you know be able to drink and party and have fun. But now that she's 61, those wheels are coming off the cart. That's going to be our case next week. I mean, and it, this is a beautiful one because. Uh, she's all, she's at, I mean, we gave her her report today, and she was just blown away by all the information that it gave her. So let's just get through this and get to recommendations. So this is a pretty interesting you know, recommendation. You can either think of um, Adraset is the uh, obviously the adaptogen for the adrenals. And then still point is to get the cortisol down. So you're working on balancing adrenal function getting and getting the cortisol down. Now, you could just choose to use still point, and that's it. Um, but this really does hit it quite well because if you look at this, if you just focus on the brown and the blue, right, something for sleep, get the adequate magnesium status in, Get the vitamin D up, work on the adrenals, and give a uh, the wellness essentials healthy balance. It's a multivitamin. It's focused on blood sugar, so it's got extra chromium in it, and it's got extra B vitamins in it. So that really ends up fitting the getting the homocysteine down. Now, if it you know his his lipids weren't all that off, but if he came back and his blood pressure was slightly elevated, his lipid particle number was slightly off, you would think that, that would pull up automatically uh, like aged garlic extract would be perfect. But it's really, we don't have enough info to really make that the primary driver, right? If he changes his diet, gets less 
kind of disglycemic, so he's not spiking his blood sugar post meal, and he gets his stress hormones under control and sleeps, he's probably going to overcome those lipid anomalies that he has going on. And in terms of his um, prostate health, you know, probably a simple recommendation of, hey, if you're not on salt palmetto, but he was on salt palmetto already, actually, um, that, that uh, you know, that would be the simple recommendation. I, you know, I think getting his sympathetic nervous system to calm down actually could have some big impact on his, on his prostate, just like getting his vitamin D status up could. Uh, and you could choose to do more vitamin D, obviously, on some of my prostate folks, you know, I'll do, you know, 30,000 units a day for 10 days and then drop down. But as a general recommendation, this report actually pretty much nailed what the guy needed to do, which was get your blood sugar under control, get your adrenals under control with uh, an adaptogen and something for stress response, get yourself to sleep at night, get your vitamin D and magnesium status back. And, and, and honestly, um, you know, we're, 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 we continue to get this refining of this report as we run more and more of these. Th this was almost a perfect rendition uh, for his complaints. And, uh, you know, and really, that's, uh, you know, that's our case. I mean, I think it's a good case. And, you know, what, do you, what would you think of on him? Because of his platelet that picked up, think about pops or heavy metals, uh, checking for environmental toxins, you know, do the metabolic code diet, uh, you know, cognitive impairment, you could add, you know, Cereva from Meta, you could add RG3 nasal spray for him because he would get an immediate pop off of that. Uh, so these are things that you can add in addition to this baseline platform. Um, and if you're really looking to change his lipid target, I would not be giving him anything for lipids right now. I would give him 90 days, get his diet changed, manage his cortisol because we know that cortisol definitely impacts lipid particle size and LDL production. So, you know, we, we go there and, uh, you know, we start there and, and uh, look, if, you know, as we well know, you know, with the sinuses, a lot of times that's gut, that might be the next thing to consider doing. It's like in your first visit, we're going to work on getting your stress under control, getting your sleeping, getting your blood sugar better. On your next time you come back, we're going to evaluate based on changing your diet, is your, is your nose still runny? Do we need to go there and work on your gut? But that way you kind of get, you're, you're getting him started with the things he's going to feel the most. And, you know, it's, for him it's all about stress, cognitive function, and being able to get a better night's sleep. And, uh, you know, and the rest of this is kind of, you know, you know the rest. It's, it's here are the reports that will explain all of it to him. And what type of exercise program does this guy need? Does he need something where he's jacked up? No, he needs to do a, you know, a moderate heart rate. You know, he's 40 years old. Probably don't get his heart rate up over 125, 130. You know, do some moderate, you know, walking. You know, don't jack his stress up anymore, but get him getting more physically active. Committing to walking, committing to getting his 10,000 steps a day, and if you can, uh, and that's a great start. Because at one point he's going to need to exercise and move some weight. Uh, just to kind of, you know, optimize his uh, fat burning potential. So that is our case tonight. Beautiful case, actually. And once again, not, not horribly complex, but really the type of person that, you know, is going to refer a bunch of people in and they're basically well, but they want to get tuned up. But you also see if, if, the, if he keeps on doing what he's doing, he's the guy that becomes basically sick. And 25 years down the line, basically cognitive you know, issues start to pop up, right? So really looking at the cracks in the dam here with him, you, you, you can see where he's going to play out. So uh, that's it. That's the case. Great. Thanks, Jim. So now I'm going to open it up to questions and see. This is a pretty basic. I mean, although this is a basic case, it's once again a real-world case that came in wanted the evaluation and, and it showed the nuances of what's going on. I mean, a lot of the folks that have been listening to our cases where we've had tougher ones, this one probably looked like a no-brainer by now looking at the triads. Yep. Great. It's a great example. Okay. Well, if there are no questions, just FYI, I've recorded the session 
and it will be online in 24 to 48 hours at metaboliccode.com forward slash blog. And Marta, yeah. the other one is, is I'm going to, I'm going to highlight a case next week as well. We're going to do that one case, but I'm going to highlight this other case of this ulcerative colitis case that was hospitalized and then came out and uh, we got him on board with stuff and he went from a pain level of 10 plus to a pain level of one in three weeks with the protocol we put together using the metabolic code. So oh. we're going to have a little more complex case uh, next start. You know, next week. I'm going to try and start doing, because I think I can do it in a half hour, I'm going to try and do an easy case and a complex case in our half hour time allotment. Just oh, to let would, people know. That would be excellent. That would be excellent. So this is next week. We'll have the um, ulcerative colitis patient. Is that right? Yep. Okay, great. Great. All right. Thank you very much for attending great. tonight. Right, and we will talk to you next week. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Have a great evening. Bye.